Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Star Wars Out in the Dark. My name is Will. I'll be your storyteller this evening. And last we left off, we only had Brandon and Ike here, which is Flid and Edie. And slowly but surely, we are getting the pieces back together again of this crew that has been scattered to the wind. Flid has spent his days on Jix's farm trying to trying to figure out what to do as the Republic has taken Edie into custody. Uh, luckily, with Raceup's help, they found a working tractor beam that they could attach to their ship and slowly Flid kind of built up this crew of uh, ragtag and um, misfit farmers to kind of replace the crew that he doesn't have anymore um so we saw them go through that race up asked his wife for permission to kind of join them and as we bounced over to Edie, we found him in his pure state in his crystal form in the middle of an atrium with a few kind of bonsai like trees and some beautifully colored uh lizards that seemed to have pulled him and kind of blanked him from the force. We saw him interacting with Doman Crow and a Republic technician as they tried to test the limits of just how far Edie could stretch himself and his abilities to kind of control different uh, electrical equipment. And after a brief kind of interaction between the two of them, we came back to Flid, who has attached this tractor beam to his ship, has unlikely as he could uh, attached race up to his crew, as well as a couple of twins named Oric and Sewa. They mentioned that they got the... Um, tractor beam from a widow named Gorla Fent, whose husband used to be a Republic soldier, and as such has some connections on the base. But as one triumph was being had, a kind of downfall befell the group, as they saw a Venator-class starship just kind of drop out of hyperspace in orbit, and a heavily armored uh, shuttle descended onto the planet escorted by some fighters and after seeing a hollow vid of the arriving senator Grandel Reigns he also saw what was unmistakably near a haze being followed by a new aide de camp uh, in the form of a Celestine woman who he recognized as his wife we bounce back to Edie, where he was visited by Doman's uh, apprentice, a young girl named Nella, who asked him uh, why he had trepidations with helping Crow. She revealed that there are some dark things coming that Crow has seen that she is trying to figure out how to help as best as possible. She also let him know that the reason he is kind of been dampened in the force is because of the lizards that share his atrium, which she referred to as Isalamiri. They had a discussion about her brother, who turned out to be uh, Jarrus Randu, who we know better as Silas Winchester. Um, and asked who brought him back and revealed that they are in contact at least with Dathomir, which is Tipo paladins and monks of Shimura. Um, Edie saw her leave a small kyber crystal for him and mouth something to him um, but he only could make out the word hope out of that. We jump back over to Flid, who had 
built up his crew and had set off to try and find this beacon in the gas giant um, some to find some way of shifting the current power struggle on the planet uh, and with Jigs in the pilot seat, Illis in the front cannon, uh, radio helping as best he can, Race up and Sewa in the engine room, and Auric in the turret. They took off that night to try and find this thing. Uh, and after micro jumping to the gas giant, they saw that the Fane's Rise was sitting in orbit. And after a brief kind of back and forth with Pris Leonard, uh, Auric opened fire to try and catch them off guard and forced a chase into the gas giant where everything started to go wrong. We jumped back to Edie, who, after talking one more time with Doman Crow, was shown a hollow recording of a moment in time with a person who would later be known as Viklik Kiln, Jethrak Kiln's son, Edie's master. Uh, the coin knight had uh, emerged uh, over a green and blue swirl of a planet, uh, and upon entering, it wasn't because of foliage or water, it was because the actual atmosphere was a swirl of green and blue miasma. And as Viklik was making his way towards what looked like an abandoned Jedi architecture, uh, another ship entered the atmosphere and kind of cut him off. And we saw a Keldorian Jedi named Plo Dolo descend and try to stop him from doing whatever he was trying to do. It was revealed that Viklik had become a host to a Sith spirit named Darth Zavat. Uh, Crow believes that Edie knows who has become the new host of Darth Zavat now in the present day. After the video, Doman and Edie came to a amicable conclusion to their situation. Uh, Master Crow revealed that his original body was on its way to Coruscant for examination, but that he had prepared another body for him in the interim. Uh, and as Edie was placed back into his new body, and he put the new kyber crystal that had been given to him to good use, we saw for the first time exactly what color lightsaber Edie has, and where he stands in the scheme of things as far as the Jedi are concerned. And as that kind of triumphant moment was being had on one side of the system, in the other, Flid managed to find this impossible thing swirling like a comet around the center of this gas giant. And after some harrowing display of strength and skill and luck most of all they managed to get the beacon and as they rocketed out of the atmosphere of this gas giant and were about to punch it to come back home zatsek fell dead in space black nothing was working and it just drifted into nothing and that's where we left off our last session and today, we pick up with an entirely different pair. We have Edie returning, but we finally get to find out what has happened to Xylus Shakti in this span of time that has been going on around them. It's good to see you too. Hello. Hey there. Yeah. Um, do not let it loose until we get to your scene brandon but we do we do have to kind of break in katie to your new voice uh, okay you got it excellent 
it's great because right right before this my loving girlfriend told me how much she hated the old ed voice and how happy she is there's a, there's a different one <laughs> you know so. we, we we tried to be subtle about uh what we thought about your voice oh no she was not subtle yeah yeah well somebody's gotta have somebody's gotta put down the big the big boots uh, but we're gonna go to a very idyllic and very different couple of weeks uh from what everybody else has had it is it has been maybe three days since you have come to this farm where it is maybe the first time in a long time that you've slept on an actual bed that you've dealt with an actual son and that you have had cooking that isn't flint um, but it is also the first time that you've ever been woken up by the sudden and very well-meaning and non-violent thrust of a young body tossing themselves on top of you. Uh, Akila has been very keen to have this member of the family that they've never met before um she is a ball of energy and every time that you think that she's at her limit she finds a new well to just pull energy out of <coughs> excuse me your brother has um, shown you around the farm. Um, he has enough of, a, of uh, skill and enough of a pull with some of the other farmers that although him and his wife stay on the first floor of the farmhouse for obvious reasons, um, he can get up to the second floor if needed. Um, Akila, being in part of her rebellious state, has chosen to put her bedroom upstairs. And the guest room is also upstairs, so there's a lot of uh, you being the adult in the upstairs portion of the house. How is that for Shakti? Uh, I think it's a mixture of things it's mm. exciting it's you know family is always nice and i grew up around a lot of children and uh you know i was there were always people younger than me and i was always there were people older than me too but you know like taking care of of kids and having that youthful energy around that's very familiar i think it also is a little bit of a, a reminder that life didn't exactly go the way I expected it to go. I mm -hmm. think I, I planned that by now I would have had children of my own. Yeah. Uh, so this sort of, you know, reminder that I don't is a little bittersweet. Mm. Um, you know, brings back like the thought of my first love, Rio Rex, and how that like obviously never really... Mm -hmm worked out um and yeah just sort of i chose my career i chose uh science and and nature and following what is important to me uh in a, a logical sense over sort of what would be fulfilling emotionally so sort of coming to terms with that like awareness of that okay. um akila is 
attached to you. Uh, you are the newest thing in her life. You are... You represent this side of her father that she has kind of let on that she barely hears about. Like, she knows more about her mother's side of the family than she does about her father's. Um, and to her, you are this kind of treasure trove of information. And she just will sit there and just ask questions uh, exhaustively. But one day, there is a moment where you're outside. It, at this point, has been a week, and you haven't heard from anyone. There was a moment where you felt this coldness kind of come over you, but at the same time, it, it was also moving away. It was dissipating almost. And in the whole week, you have not had any nightmares. You have not had any voices. You haven't had any urges. Um, but Akila kind of points out something to you out over the field. And you see what looks to be a kind of pill-shaped droid kind of hovering. There are three tendrils that kind of whip and churn underneath it. It has a central kind of red ocular eye, um, just camera. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's not threatening in any way, but it is just kind of sitting there at the edge of the farm and just looking at what looks to be recording. Is it the same eye or does it look like the same eye that was on in the um, security room with all those security cameras or monitors, remember? No, no, this looks like just a large kind of camera lens okay. it's reflecting red now but it's kind of got a gold sheen to it almost like it's built to to survive in space and to record in the vacuum of space if necessary um, did, it, did it just arrive like we saw it arrive or it's been there for a while and the Aquila just noticed it it, you're not sure, but Akila kind of just noticed it and did point it out to you, but you never heard any kind of crash. You never heard any any sound of an engine. And you do notice that when Akila points it out, there's a moment where the tendrils kind of stop moving and they retract into its body. And then it just kind of starts to hover away from the farm. The tendrils remind me of... Uh, anything. Do they remind me of any of the, like, plants that I've seen, or... They're very things? reminiscent of the octopus plant that you bought on Bespin. Okay. They seem to not have a rhyme or reason to their movement. They're just very natural. Um... Uh, the only unnatural thing is once it's been spotted, it kind of does retract them like a normal droid. Okay. Uh, well, I, I want to investigate, but I don't want it. I don't want to go anywhere near that with Aquila. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's all for investigating. She's like, come on, let's go check it out. I'm sure she is. <laughs> yeah, I think that it looks a little bit scary, and I think that we should keep each other safe, my friend. So oh, maybe we can play some games. Oh, but it, it looks so shiny. It's pretty shiny, and sometimes shiny things are dangerous. What if it's from the Republic base? Might be, but it might not be, too. What if there's a Jedi inside? Wow, wouldn't that be crazy? It would be a pretty small Jedi. I could... Yeah. I mean, what if it's a baby Jedi and we need to save it? 
Well, it doesn't look to be in any distress. I think if it was a baby Jedi who needed saving, they would definitely look more like they needed saving. Oh, you think so? I think so. I mean, if you if you need help, right? If you like fall over and you get a, a cut on your knee, what would you do? I would ask for help. Yeah, so you would have you would ask for help, and then we would know that you needed help. If that's a Jedi over there, they're not doing a very good job of asking for help, are they? Oh, you're right. Should we go look anyways? And she kind of starts know. pulling on your hand. Hey, I'm feeling a little bit hungry. Are you feeling hungry? I mean, I could eat, but I'm not hungry. Hmm. Well, what if we play a game where we go and see what kind of food we could find? Inside the thing? No, outside the thing. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, I guess. It'll be really fun. Okay, I'll race you to my room and she just runs inside. Uh, once she's gone, mm -hmm. I look again at the thing and try to do like a quick little uh, meditation slash force feeling. Does it seem like anything is weird with it? Hmm. First roll of the night. Uh, let's have you roll your sense. sense. Let's see what you get. Ooh. Roll 20 looks different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They spruced it up. Hmm. All right. Sense. Work? Eight. With a one in the wild mm. die. Ah, good. Yeah. It's all right. You, you reach out with the force, and there's nothing coming back from it. There is no life to sense off of it. There's no force to sense off of it. It, it feels mechanical. It is, it is a droid, true and through. Does it react any differently now that I'm doing that? Like, do, do you, does it seem like it can tell that I'm trying to interact with it? It doesn't. Okay. No. After, after a moment, it barely kind of starts to disappear over the horizon. You can just make out the top of it, and you see it suddenly shoot a flare up into the sky. And after a moment, you see what looks to be a Republic shuttle come over and pick it up. Weird. Okay. And you see it start to make out towards the mountain where the Republic base is located. But you hear Dana, uh, your brother's wife, kind of at the door. <coughs> excuse me, to their kitchen. Why, why is my daughter saying that she can have ice cream? is a very good question because that's most certainly not what i told her oh somebody's a liar and you just see her you just see akila <laughs> come running out with a spoonful of ice cream akila that's not what i meant <laughs> yeah. and you just see her run into the field <laughs> and as we kind of leave this idyllic scene for just a second we pick up right where we left off with Edie. And the room, oh, no. the room is bathed in the green light of your lightsaber and the green light of Doman Krell's lightsaber. Um, and he kind of looks at you. Now, I, I hope you understand that I can't, you're not my student, BD. I'm asking you to help because you're a Jedi. 
Just like I am. Just like Nella is. And just like all the others that came before you. Will you help me find this, this darkness? Yes. I will help you find the darkness. Excellent. I have asked a pilot help. Seeing as your compatriots are no longer on world, um, will this be an issue for you? It will not. No. Okay. You see a technician come over to him and give him a small kind of data pad. He looks at it and he kind of curses under his breath. All right. Um, what seems to be the issue? Uh, well, we've we found Nella. It's just, uh, it's not what I was expecting. And you see, he shows you the data pad, and it has a video recording of a farmhouse. And you can see Dr. Zylus Shakti with a little girl. And after a moment, the little girl points in the direction of the camera. And then the droid shuts off the recording, and uh, the timestamp is kind of recorded as well as the, the geo marker of where this is. But the one thing that distresses you the most out of this image is the fact that there are stats on both of them. Whoa, they define stats. There's a a kind of green outline on both of them, as well as a stamp of the Jedi Order, as well as an estimated MC count. Uh, what was the number for both of them? Both of them show at least a uh, thousand. Oh no. I don't believe that either of those are Nella, sir. No, no, but this, and he taps on Dr. Zylus Shakti, and this is something that we have dealt with in the past, and uh, is something that might, that might turn Nella towards a more towards a more reactive state instead of being in the moment. She might let feelings get the better of her if you don't understand what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying. However, the last I remember Nella was searching for the darkness, not a farmer and what appears to be their daughter. Yeah, uh... Thing is, Nella and this one here had history. And I didn't order a probe droid from the council. I can only assume this was her doing. It's hard sometimes because there's a lot of things that Brandon knows because he listens to everybody. And then there are the moments like this where it's like, does Edie know this? Or is this something Brandon knows? But I can affirm that only Brandon knows about their history. Edie has no clue. Well, Edie just learned it. So, he, what, what history do, do they share? 
There, there was a moment a few years ago we were tasked with protecting um, Senator, just kind of like how we are now. They're trying to protect Reims. Um, an insurgency. Still haven't found proof yet, Edie, so. While we are in a Republic base, could we try to keep down any accusations of a Republic Senator in my presence? I mean, I. I know it's personally been done to me, but sure, whatever makes you more comfortable, Master. Just the ears, the walls have ears, Edie, and. There's only so far that I can protect you. Wish you could say that on Bespin. Uh, but we were protecting the senator, uh, and there was an insurgent rise uh, at a dinner, and unfortunately, during the attack, uh, there were some casualties. Among them was uh, what turned out to be this person's brother. I see. Then it may be smart of us to beat Nella to the chase and arrive to the farmhouse safely. Undercover, I would say. We don't want to alert the farmers to our presence. However, we don't want to alert Nella to us knowing. All right. Uh, uh, sh seeing as how this person is a member of the crew that you're a part of, I um, I will trust your oh, judgment. Oh, you are aware of this. Oh, then I, I was. I have been being. I am. I was being coy. I was not aware that you knew that I knew the doctor. Oh yes. Did I not mention oh, that I have well, dossiers yes. on your crew? No, not at all. Oh. I have dossiers on your crew. Then let let then let's go. Oh, the, this is wonderful to know. Oh, I. Some of us. Some of us being me, Edie. Wish you opened with that, but this is fine. Let's go say hi to the doctor. I haven't seen him in what feels like two months. He puts out his hand and stops you as you're about to move over, and he's just like, Edie, is there anybody else on your crew that would show up in one of these probe droids like this? Well, I suppose the question is, can you list the names of the people you have on your dossier? Yes, of course. Uh, I have your captain, Flid, Grilled, Soliston. I have uh, Xylus Shakti, Zalosian. Well, yes, them. You, and then I have... Uh, oof. Uh, how many names here? Um, Silas Winchester. I know him. Yeah. Um, no, let's just play this game. Can I have the rest of his name so I can give him one of them next time I see him? Oh, uh, he goes by uh, Val Arar. That one sounds familiar. Yeah. Um... This game is no longer fun. We can just stay with Silas. No. Um, I, do you know his background? No, he's a, he's a blank. He's a... I know he's a Maris. And that's about it. Um, has had interactions with the Republic on several occasions. Uh, mostly being on the wrong side of the Republic. Um... But it looks like he's an idealist. It looks like he's he's trying to do good in his own way. Just doesn't do it the he's right doing way. Good in his own way. Yeah, he's not doing it I the right way. The right way. The right way 
is the wrong way when you're looking at it a different way. We all do good in our own ways, sir. Uh, Silas, uh, a very good friend of mine at this point in time, someone who has saved me in, on multiple occasions, uh, he is doing good in what I'm slowly understanding is the only way. Not through violence, but through options. There is the choice. He presents those who do harm the choice. It only turns out that when left with that choice, some will choose to fight their way out of it. And it is not their fault that Silas has uh, something that I know very personally, which is a very good shot. Um, however, kind of put, puts his hand up and he's like, Edie, you understand that you're describing vigilantism and that what he's doing goes against the laws of the Republic, the laws that you and I and have sworn to uphold. I, I uphold older Republic bylaws and these older ideas. These new ones are still fairly foreign to me. Especially when they're being led by someone who'd rather see you dead on the street. Um, but that is fine. Uh, however, if I were allowed to continue my sentiment, uh, it may be possible that she is after him. Well, we'll have to find out, won't we? I suppose we will. He stops, and he's like, why would she be after him? He has an understanding of the Force that I think you share a mutual friend with through this Dark Lord. He did not want it. It sought him out and has taken a hold of him. And I did not notice until it was too late and he was already possessed. He shakes his head. He's like, nah, so nah, I've read, I've read Nella's files. Her family... A family was diagnosed. They, they, they were their scan. None of them showed any MC counts worth going after. I never mentioned they. I never mentioned they were related. He smiles. Did I? I don't believe I did. I apologize for invasively. Being observant to your topmost emotions, Edie. You did not have my consent for that, sir. My Padawan is involved in this, so you'll have to excuse me for caring about her safety. Just this once, I will excuse it. I will say, he has... If you were to scan him now, he has MC charts. How high they rocket, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. However, I would, instead of going after the doctor, I would make him a priority. He shakes his head. Uh, the force works in mysterious ways, I tell you. It's brought us all together. It pulled me out of hyperspace. He looks at the technician, he's like, Get the pilot prepped, uh, let him know that he's, he's to be careful with my, he kind of looks over at you and he's like, uh, I was going to try to broach this with a little more time and finesse, uh, but you see him kind of hold out the data pad to you as he's kind of switched over to some paperwork. Oh. 
and looking at it, it looks like a standard um, a standard kind of Jedi contract. It is a bid for apprenticeship. He's like, I am. I am going to need much more time to think of this. Sure. It's just that Nella's close enough that she can take her knighthood training. So I will be in the market for a new apprentice. He kind of hands the technician the data pad. Let us try and solve this issue together. And if the force twines us further, we shall follow through. He looks at you like, oh, uh, we'll see about that. I'm, uh, I'm going to go chase Nella's brother. Your pilot is taking you to this farmhouse so you can reunite with your associate. I, I have a feeling you may be more successful if I go with you, Osiris. He laughs. Uh, he's like, I think, I think Nella might be after him more than this person. And I think I'm better equipped to handle her than, than you are. But who is better equipped to handle him? We'll have to see when we get there, won't we? May the force be with you, Master Crow. May the force be with you, Edie. I wish you luck on your campaign. And I hope that, at the very least, you can get your crew back together again. You see him turn and he walks down towards the uh, uh starport. He stops. When you find her, might I suggest you heading back to Coruscant? It may be important for her to meditate there, if not somewhere else. I will, I will let her know. <clears throat> All right. Can you see him go off towards uh, the landing port. Uh, the technician kind of nods at you and motions for you to follow him. Can I have my old body back, please? He looks, the technician kind of looks at you, he's like, I, I'm not responsible for that. I don't know, I don't even know where that is. All right. But he leads you to the other landing port where you see a typical kind of, uh, simple shuttle sitting there there are two republic troopers that are sitting outside one of them sitting down on a crate the other one's kind of standing uh they see you approach and they the one sitting down kind of stands up hits the other one on the arm the other one kind of turns they both turn towards you they salute one of them looks at you, he's like sir I'm to escort you to uh to a farm would it be possible to have the Sullustan woman come with me? The one who arrived on the capital ship? They look at each other and then they look at you like, but we, we don't have that kind of authority, sir. Um, you would have to take that up with, with either the Jedi or, or Senator Reigns. I am a Jedi. Right, right, right. I mean, I mean sir, no offense, but the... The other Jedi. Well, it is a shame then that both of them have left on a mission, and now I am a Jedi here with you. I will show you. I, I will not keep her long. It is only a short while. The one sitting down kind of looks over at him and is like, Yeah, man, come on. This is supposed to be an easy gig. And the other guy is like, oh. I mean, I... Do you have a name, sir? I, I, I just... 
can't go around just asking for a uh, Celestine I, woman. Uh, Edie would Edie would know the name. Brandon just doesn't have it written down in front of him because um, it was said the other day. Was it said to you? Yeah. Yeah, it was said in my presence, and then I uh, in, almost introduced myself to her by saying her name. But I didn't have the opportunity. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is Aim Bombaz. I believe her name is Aim Bombaz. Okay. All right, sir. And you see him kind of step away. You hear the clicking noise of, of his comms coming to life. There's a hushed kind of tone. You can see him kind of moving his head up and down. Uh, and then he comes back. He's like, um, there was some issue, sir, but uh, I, I assured them that this was a Jedi matter. Um, she's being, she's being brought down. Wonderful. The, the one that was sitting down kind of looks at you. He's like, is, is there a need for a science officer, sir? I, I I was told that we were just kind of going to a farm. There, she touched me, so there's a connection. Not a lot of people touch me. The two of them kind of look at each other. They take a step back. It's like, should, should we not touch you, sir? I would prefer if no one touched me. But sometimes I'm not given the opportunity. Understood. And after a few minutes, you see a few more Republic soldiers kind of coming. Uh, and they escort AIM over to your shuttle. And she kind of nods at you. Miss Bombas. Master Jedi, how, how can I be of service? I... I would like to speak with you. Not a lot of people get to touch me, and it feels as though they've brought you here just for that. I, so, I, I have a feeling you know more about my kind than, than others. I, I don't, actually, sir. Would you care to know? Um, as only, a science officer. I'm... I, this is this is a glory title. Uh, it's a cosmetic title, sir. I'm I'm really just clerical. Would you prefer a day out of the office then? I mean, you specifically asked for me, sir. So I so I am here. I walk into the I walk into the shuttle, hoping she just falls behind. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Uh, and the two the two Republic troopers that were there for you, kind of you 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 hear them coming up on the ramp, and as the ramp is closing and the pilot kind of takes a seat, you see them both kind of fist bump each other, and they take seats. Um, and as your ship is taking off towards this farm, we'll go to the actual farm itself. And we pick right up with Dr. Shakti as Akila is running into the field, spoonful of ice cream. And her mother, Dana, kind of sits down on the steps uh, near you. And she kind of looks up. It's been nice having you here. I haven't seen Drox this happy in a long time. Well, thank you. It's really nice being here. A much needed uh, break from reality. He, um, he brought it up the other day, and I don't want to surprise you with it, but I also know that he's going to make a big thing out of it, so I think it's better if you hear it from me. Um, We want you to stay with us. It's it's been, it's been great for him. It's it's been great for Akila. Um, heavens, no! I could use the help.
I know it's a big ask. I just... I like seeing how he is around you. And I think he's done a lot of good for you. I think Aquila's done a lot of good for you. I mean, I can't argue with you there. You're absolutely right. And I have had such a wonderful time. And I am so grateful and appreciative of you opening up your home to me, a stranger, and allowing me to so quickly become a part of this family. I would love to stay. I don't know. I would be letting down my crew. I would be letting down my family. And I, I just don't know that I would be able to do that to them. Maybe, maybe think about it then. Uh, of course, definitely. I won't make a decision until I've given it some simple thought. I, I, I know we haven't, we haven't brought it up to Akila because she would just flip out. But I know that you have at least two votes and possibly a third. Uh, I mean, most assuredly a third uh, vote for, for you staying. Thank you. She gets up and you see her kind of like <clears throat> Excuse me. She dusts off her hands and she walks back into the kitchen. After a moment, you see Akila come running back from the field. Her spoon is empty of ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, but you see her kind of pointing up at the sky. And as you follow her finger, you see this familiar shape you saw it on bespin you you have had it ingrained in you from bespin um it is an aether sprite and the triangular shape lands not too far from the road and as the dust settles around the ship's landing, you see a cloaked kind of figure emerge from a cockpit. It is... Uh, I'm gonna... What? I'm going to uh, bend down and talk to Akila and tell her that I have something very, very, very important to ask her. Mm -hmm. um, your mother is inside and she has an extremely important task that she needs help with. It's so important. But the thing is, you can't make a big deal about it. You just have to let go in there and pretend that you don't know what's going on, but you just want to help her. Can no. you just ask, go and find out exactly what it is? But don't ask her what it is. But just tell her that you want to help her. I don't. I don't want to do chores though. And she's Not gonna. Chores. She's gonna yell at me for the ice cream. No, she understands about the ice cream. We. I, I already talked to her. It's okay. You only had one scoop, so you're what, fine. What did you tell her? I. I told her that you shouldn't have done that, but that you know you did it, and I still. I already scolded you for it. Is she mad about it? No, she understands. She looked mad about it. Well, she was mad at first, but, you know, sometimes grown-ups get mad, and then they get over it. Did you talk to her? I did. And she's okay. She's not going to yell at me. Not going to yell at you. You see her hold up her pinky? Pinky promise? I mean, I can't control everything that she does, but I'm pretty sure she 
you. And I pretty promise that if she does, she won't stay mad forever. She has this very disappointed look. And she kind of looks at her pinky. She's like, the pinky promise is a solemn and sacred thing. And you can't just throw that away. I pinky promise you that your mother loves you so, so much, and there's absolutely nothing that you could do to change that. Okay. She hooks her, her pinky around yours, and she gives you the spoon, and then she kind of rudges up the stairs into the kitchen. And you see the cloaked figure come over at this point. And you hear a modulated droid voice coming out. Uh, you are Xylus Shakti. Correct. The young girl. Not a young girl. No, the young girl is Akila Shakti. Why are you asking? You have been found by the Republic. You I wasn't aware I was hiding from the Republic. You both have suitable MC counts to join the Jedi Order. You're to come with me. Uh, um, I don't know what to say. The girl must be taught. She belongs with her kind. Uh, can I have some time to discuss it with her parents? There's a moment when you see the hand come up into the hood. You hear a clicking noise, and then you see the hand drop with the modulator in hand. And then the other hand comes up and pulls the cloak back, and you see Nella. And she just looks over at you, and she's just like, You look good. It's been some time. Certainly has. I hear oh. you. You've been with my brother. Thank you. Your brother. You know him as Silas. Silas is your brother? She nods. And you can see that her eyes are watering. And she's like, I know what you did for him. I know that I can never repay that. It must have, must have done terrible things to you. I'm sorry. I don't regret what I did, my friend. You see her take a step towards you. The droid that was here earlier, that's a Republic droid. Figured. They know about her. They're going to come for her. Did you know? I didn't. No, I had no idea. She hasn't shown anything to you? I mean, she... A spirit, for sure. She's a firecracker, and she has energy that I don't understand how it continues to regenerate. But I also haven't been around small children in a little while, so I thought maybe... I just forgot how much energy they have. She takes another step towards you. I... <laughs> I'm sorry for Bespin. Sorry too. 
we were on our way when everything happened. We've been trying to We've been trying to get back to Edie. I met him. I met it, by the way. Oh, are they? They're fine. They're safe. I, I gave them a present. Um, when you see her kind of wipe away a tear, she's just like, I gave, I gave him, I gave them what I was going to give you that night at the dinner. And she kind of looks up. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm just going to have to go find another one, aren't I? And slowly her eyes kind of come down towards, towards yours. I'm sure whatever it is is safe with ED. I never, I never stop thinking. You. Not one night. But I, I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you're alive too. I haven't stopped thinking about you either. I have to say that I'm. I'm sorry that we didn't see this sooner. See what sooner? What was in you? What's been in you? She kind of turns back towards her ship and she's like, What's in Jairus? Silas. Yeah. That's his real name. Uh, it isn't up to you to know what is inside of the depth of me. I didn't know, and I should have. And if I did, I... She holds up her hand. She's like, no, no, no. The... I don't, I don't presume. I mean, we should have caught it sooner, but we didn't know what we were dealing with. And now we do. Now we know about the Sif spirit. We know how it, how it started to find its hosts. Hosts? It, it used to be in a Jedi named Viklik Kiln. We believe that because of his interaction with you, that he might have opened you up. As a possible host, and because of your interaction with my brother, you opened him up to be a host. I, I, I'm not blaming you. I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's your fault. And you can see now that she's full on crying. I just, I wanted to say that I'm sorry because we should have stopped it with you, and you didn't know better. And now, Mr. Crow does. And Master Crow thinks that with Edie's help, we can stop this permanently. There's a, there's a darkness coming. And we need, to, we need to stop it. And you see that she's... Her hand starts to come up, reaching for you. And just as it kind of crosses above her waistline you see another shuttle come around from the front of the house. And she looks startled up at it, and she's like, she looks down at you, and she goes, 
I trust you know how to find me. And you see her just turn and start running towards her fighter. <clears throat> and as one ship descends, the other rises, and you see the triangular form of the Aether Sprite just rocket into the atmosphere and disappear. And as the other shuttle lands, and the landing ramp comes down, you see two Republic troopers, and what looks to be a very, very kind of heavily modified and robed a protocol droid stepped down, followed by a Sullustan woman in, in, in uh, Republic, sorry, foreshadowing uh, in Republic science officer uniform. Uh, the two troopers stop at the bottom of the ramp, Edie, but uh, you do see that the Aether Sprite that you saw as you were coming in has taken off and that the only person outside at the base of the stairs leading up into this farmhouse is Dr. Silas Shakti. Is the Aether Sprite still in my range? No. No, it's gone. No? Okay. I, I will walk to the doctor. Do I, I mean, what do you look like? <laughs> uh... I, I'm the way I'm imagining it is um it's like a rose gold kind of C3PO but with fitted robes. Wow, fancy stuff. Yep, yep. The robes are on magnetic plates that you can control. You can turn them on and off so they can kind of slide off to help you in combat. Hot. Yep. Uh, but the in, imagine um. The C-3PO you've seen in the movies, but instead of having a full kind of helmet, <coughs> excuse me, um, instead of having a good uh, full-sized helmet, uh, you see that there are kind of Praetorian plates placed around, and then you can see the, the actual inner workings of, um, of the wiring. But even even with the kind of segmented plates, he does look like a little, a little bit more better armored than uh, than a regular protocol droid. And you do see the Republic it's a hot droid summer. <laughs> you do see the Republic kind of Jedi robes, the same silhouette. <laughs> but there is. Do you have the lightsaber on your belt, or do you have it hidden like a? No, it's hidden. It's in. It's in the case. And the leg. It's in my leg. It's a symbol of power. And you just choose to hide it. it. You don't need to exhibit power on an easygoing farmland. Touche. Live your life. Man, yeah, you are reunited. But, I mean, I don't know. It's. You don't. I mean, if, if you know it's me, we're reunited. Yeah. Can I help you? I'm honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Here's exactly what I'm doing. I'm walking up to you, and I'm going like this. D. Is it not nicer than the old body? <laughs> Nice digs, man. <laughs> Thank you. I, honestly, the Republic serves its people well in some wow, cases. Wow, and the voice box, too. What of it? Great. I, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it sounds great. You look great. Who... Who was that? Who was your previous visitor? Uh, is anyone else with Edie? Who's there? Yeah, there's a Sullivan woman uh, that's following him, and there's two Republic troopers, but they're back at the ramp to the shuttle, so they're a good distance away. Okay, so I'm going to lower my voice to make sure that they don't hear me. Yeah. Um, that was Nella. 
Oh no. Oh no? Her mast is currently en route to what I presume to be Silas, thinking that Nella's already there. We okay. So this whole operation has now shifted because I was sent over here just to you know get the gang back together. It seems to me that Nella say. doesn't want to be found by her master. It doesn't seem Oh I'm positive she doesn't. I I have a feeling she wants to either kill her brother or yeah, save him. Yeah, I don't him. think it's kill. You don't? Based on our interactions. I'm really positive on kill. Like, kill the dark side. I could definitely be wrong. I really need to remind myself that I've not really spoken to people in 150 years. She said that she wished she had taken care of it sooner. Before it reached him. I didn't think taken care of meant kill, but it could have been because she was talking about me, and I didn't Linguistically speaking, that sounds murderous. Yeah. Taking care of. Did she say taken out at no. any point? Taking care of. Miss Bombash, does it sound murderous or does it sound civil? All right. Oh, did I freeze? Hello? I don't hear anything. If there was a response... Oh, okay, so we're waiting. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I froze or if, if we just can't hear Will. Okay. I don't know. Are you talking, Will? Sorry. Yep, sorry. I was, I was... I muted myself to cough, and I never unmuted myself. Oh. Oh. Pro okay. Professional <laughs> right here. Um, so... <laughs> Um, you, you, you bring the question over to the Celestin, uh, who was kind of looking off into the distance, lost in her own thoughts, and she nervously, nervously kind of wiggles her ears, uh, and it reminds you of Flid, and she looks in your direction, she's like, I, I, it could, it could go either way, uh, I'm not sure why I'm here. Doctor, this is Aang Bombash. She touched me as a crystal, so I feel a kindred spirit to her. You know, I'm not a fan of when people do that, so I've taken her with me. Wow, well, that sounds confusing for her. Uh, I turn to her. <laughs> she, she nods. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for being here. I can assure you that Ed is a lovely being. Uh, it was either her or the lizards. It was her or the lizards. Yes. It sounds like we have lots to catch up on. Yes. Have you have you heard from Flid or, uh, or Silas? I have not heard from either of them. Have, Shame. You haven't either. The last I saw Flid was probably three, maybe four weeks ago. I don't know. They turned off the cameras at one point. Well, I blew up the camera at one point, so I lost track of sleep cycles on the lizards. I have not seen Silas for roughly the blowing up the camera plus two weeks. It, yeah, it has been a total of a week and a half since you've arrived on the planet. Uh, and a total of a week since the whole situation where they, they told Flit to go back to the farm. It feels so much longer than that. Yeah. Those lizards just slept the, so much. Does, yeah. uh, does Aim Bamba make any sort of like, does, does she look like anything when we mention Flit? Do you have any kind of reaction to his name? She kind of perks up, but she's also trying not to uh, draw attention to herself. 
He didn't do a good job at that, if we noticed. Yep. I mean, she's not staring off into the distance. Like, once she hears Flynn's name, like, she kind of starts to pay more attention to the conversation. I, I can only presume he's out on the Zotzek. Going after, uh... Oh, were you... You weren't. Uh... We we were tasked with finding an artifact inside of a gas giant, and Flid took the. I'm presuming Flid took the Zotzak into the gas giant to get the artifact, and he is promptly wow. on his way back. I didn't realize we were already going on missions. Yes. Hey, seems I have missed quite a bit. It's fine. It's only been maybe four months or two. I don't, I'm not sure. I was going off. Of, so I've been keeping time based off of how often the lizards slept. Uh, well, this is, so you haven't had any contact. You haven't felt any contact with Flid. No, I was told he was off planet. And then I was shown a video of you and your niece, a Republic video. Okay. Um, Are you aware of her? Of her? Yes. I wasn't. Uh, I'm a little more aware now. They're probably going to come for her. I think it might be wise if you advise your family to get off planet. Okay. For her safety. The order is not what I feel it used to be. Okay. So be sure to let them know. Can I meet them? Miss Bombash here is a uh, science officer. What kind of science? I don't know. She has not informed me of it yet. It's but I am ever curious. I love learning. It, it's it's like I've told him. Uh, I I'm not really a science officer. I'm just a clerical person that's been dressed as such. They let her hold my crystal. So that's something. It's yeah. something. Yeah. Can I can I go wait in, in the shuttle? You can go back to the base with the shuttle. I don't think I need your assistance anymore, Miss Bombash. Oh the the pilot's been assigned to you, sir. They they can be unassigned now. You know what? Uh, and I yell uh, to the pilots, you are now assigned to Miss Bombash. The pilot looks, he comes down off, the, off his seat from the ramp and he's just like, um, I'm supposed to take you back, sir. I need to stay here for further Jedi business. If I need a ride back, I know how to get one. He shrugs, he looks down at the troopers, the troopers kind of shrug up at him. It's an easy job, isn't it? And then he kind of yells out at the Celestine and is like, All right, ma'am, whenever you're ready, we can head on back then. She kind of nods at the two of you. Lovely to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I guess I have some stories to tell my boys. And she starts to make her way back into the shuttle. Your boys, what are their names? No. Um, the the eldest is uh, Zach, and the youngest is Zot. That's so interesting. Our friend Flid has children named just that. In fact, he named his ship after them. Not that. Yes, because they died. Oh, then it. it he smiles and says, it can't, "It can't be my husband." Then I was worried for a second. Thank you. And she starts. What's your husband's name? Oh. She stops and she's like, 
Flid. Uh, but our children aren't dead. What's his last name? Grilled. Doctor. Uh, um, sounds like maybe there's a, a, a mistake here, and Flid just thought that you were dead and his children, and it turns out you're not. You're very much alive. You're and so if you and your children are not dead, which is what you're saying you're not, then you are in for such a surprise when he gets back onto the planet. You, you know my husband? Know him? He's our, our captain. Friend and our captain. Oh, that that. He's a very good chef, I've heard. That can't be him. He's. I've not eaten his food. He's he's not a captain. He's. He hates. He makes gumbo, doesn't he? He was a chef. We promoted him to captain because he is a wonderful man. He must hate that. He hates giving orders. Very good. <laughs> it's he's getting used to it. I will say he's not the most excited about giving orders, but he's taking a very good shine to it. Why does, why does he think that our our boys are dead? Pause. Hey, Katie. <laughs> we know, but do they know? I don't even know. Has Flynn has Flynn told us? Uh, we just know he thinks they're dead. He never opened up about what happened in that chamber. Uh, in the chamber, but I saw him. It, the the same chamber where he the other guy was that was like trying to eat him. Yeah, did you? Did you see him get tortured fully? Did you watch the video? I saw him being tortured, yes. But, I, but not the, the video. video that he saw. I, I wasn't. Okay. Okay, because I know for sure Edie was never told how they died. He just knows that Blue. Yeah, I don't I says think I dead. agree. I don't think that I know how. Um Yeah. Okay, time in. Okay. He's never exactly told us, but it happened on Bespin, because he talked about the family before Bespin, and then after Bespin, he was incredibly distraught. That's... That... But... I mean, I my... Would you care to spend more time with the doctor and I until Flid returns? And then you can speak with him yourself. And then we'll the know matter. for certain if it really is your Flid. Yes. I mean, I I should get back to the base. Um, Miss... Yeah, uh, Agent Hayes has, has several tasks for me that I should um, take care of. Hayes, that's name... Sounds familiar. And she's she's the woman that recruited me. Um, she uh, she gave me an interview after accepting my my eldest into the, the Republic Starfighter Corps. It's gonna be a pilot like my brother. Yes, you have to be Flint's wife. He was most excited about his oldest son becoming a pilot. Mm -hmm. I mean, hmm. if it is my Flid, then I haven't spoken to him in a few years. Oh. thought he was dead. I... No, he is very much alive. In fact, he, he speaks of you and your children often. You see her ears kind of lower, um, and her eyes kind of widen. She's just like, I haven't seen him in so long. I've, I don't know. I've, I'll even remember him. Uh, is the is are the officers with me still? They're still at the ramp. Ah. Uh why don't you stay and talk to the doctor? I'll walk over to him. Gentlemen, it seems as though 
I will need further assistance from the science officer. However, and I will return back to the uh, base when we are done. I will call for an escort, or I will have the lovely family here that has agreed to take take us on, deliver us their, their, themselves. Easy day, as you said. They look at each other, and the pilot just kind of like nods. Yeah, yeah, all right, sir. I just... Yeah, I'll just this is going to be hell once it gets to if, Agent Hayes. If she has any issues, tell her. Talk to Master Dome and Crow. Sure. And you see all three Thank of the, all three of them kind of climb up into the shuttle. And after a moment, the ramp closes. The repulsor lift kicks in, and dust swirls everywhere. And you see the shuttle kind of take off and hit back in the direction of the base. And as it does, you see a young, a youngish woman, uh, Zelosian, come out of the the house by the kitchen door. And there's a young girl uh, that kind of looks a little bit more like Dr. Shakti than her own mother. Kind of looks out from behind her leg. Uh, and you just hear, should, should we set some extra... Extra seats. If you don't mind, this is my good friend and a new friend. Hello. I'm ED57, a Jedi. The little girl looks looks up and is like, droids can't be Jedis. Everybody knows that. Oh. Are you sure about that little one? She nods. Actually, Akila, sometimes things aren't exactly what they appear to be. I take my lightsaber out and ignite it. <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> yeah, you actually see that as Edie depresses the button, an actual green blade erupts from the emitter and grows into the length of a lightsaber. Wow. And and she she come the little girl just comes running over. She's like, "Oh wow, that's a lightsaber!" By the way, Doctor, I think we do have much to discuss. It looks like it. <laughs> then I turn it off because it's dangerous to have around children. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you see as you as you put it into your leg sheath, Akila kind of like comes over and she's trying to like scratch it and she's like no no let me see it again i want to see it i apologize i believe if i remember children correctly you have chores you need to do before you can do anything with lightsabers no i don't want to do chores i want to see the lightsaber and you see her kind of i look at her mother and like wait for like is this what is do you want me to do this i'll, I'll do this right now <laughs> And, but you see that she, in her, in her kind of like wanton desire to see this lightsaber, she punches with her little hand the leg, and there's a moment where you feel the short circuit erupt out of her hand, and both of you feel the pulse as the force is being called upon, and your leg just ejects the lightsaber. She goes over, she grabs it, and she's like, This is so cool! Kila! I pull it back into my hand. <laughs> you, don't, you don't take things from people without them asking, especially when they said no. I didn't take it, though. It ejected. It, it came out. If you oh, I don't them, think I pull it back. You punched their leg! Three? Yeah, no, you don't put it back with three. I'll pull it back. Yeah. You see that you start to pull on it, and her her kind of grit and weight is just too much, and, and she's, she's like, has her hands extended. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, this is mine. And as she says that, you're pushed. Uh, and you see Edie kind of topple back, like if something, like if a truck just kind of hit him midsection. And both of you feel that pulse through the force again. Kila, 
doctor. Kila, will you please hand it to me? Okay. And she comes over, sadly trudging up to you, and she hands you the lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I look at E.D. I look at the doctor. Then I look at her mom. She's just standing in the doorframe, kind of like this look of fear and trepidation. Uh, almost like instinctively, she knows what this means. Ma'am, has it happened before? Or is it recent that she's been so rambunctious you see her look over at dr shakti and before she can say anything out of the barn next to the house you see the same kind of wheelchair gentleman that appeared when dr shakti left with them and he kind of is cleaning his hands that that are oil stained and smudged and he slowly rolls over and he's just like it's it's been a thing for some time that's why we came out here i'm i'm not here to do anything that i show i can only assume that the both of you are scared of me doing that's not my job i'm here for the doctor who is a very close friend of mine I would advise, though, with my so, understanding. So you, you're not here to take my daughter, but you are here to take my sister. Well, your sister's a close friend of mine. We're on a crew together. It, it, at one point, we need to return to that. Um, I will advise it may be smart to get off planet. Agree, John. Far, no. far away from... Know about Aquila. Won't be long until they come for her. I've... They are aware. The reason we're here is because I asked Ingo for, for one last favor. I can't... I can't go back to him. He's not going to help us. And he kind of looks up at you, Silas, and he's just like, you're going to have to talk to him for us. Okay, I'll do that. There's a moment where he kind of sighs. He holds out his hands and you see Akila kind of go running over and hop onto the the wheelchair, the repulsor lift wheelchair, and just hug him. And she's like, are we going to go see Uncle Ingo again? And he's like, no, no. Um, now, Silas is... We, we're going to stay here and pack some things up. Okay, honey? She's like, are we going on a sleepover? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, something like that. He kind of looks over at the Solace and he's like, you're, uh, you're more than welcome to stay for dinner. He kind of looks over at Edie and he's like, you don't eat, do you? No, I just enjoy the company of those around me. Oh. Yeah, we got plenty of that then. Do you have a chessboard? No. No. We like simple games here. And he floats up the stairs, up to his wife, who gives him a kiss, and all three of them kind of enter the house. The two of you are left outside with this Celestine woman, who 
is also kind of grappling with the truth that you've just given her as well. You can see that she's kind of holding her hands at her chest and that there's, there's a fear of the hope that you've kindled in her. And as the two of you have been brought back together, this is where we'll end today's episode. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. And as always, please, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, please go out and get your vaccines. Um, if you feel like you have to keep your distance, please keep keeping your distance. Keep washing your hands. Keep wearing your masks wherever you are dealing with people that you don't trust. And as always, please, please, please know that uh, mental health is part of our general health. And if you're watching live on Twitch, there are going to be some phone numbers in our chat in case you need to reach out to anybody. Uh, because mental health should not be hidden behind a stigma or a taboo. If you feel like you need help, please reach out and get the help that you need. And if you're a family member of somebody or a friend of somebody who's usually a strong personality or a happy-go-lucky personality, please check in on them because you never know what some people are going through. And a simple hello or how are you doing or how's your day going can definitely change the trajectory of somebody's life. Uh, so please check in on, on everyone if you can. Uh, and as always, I will see you on Monday for our Anarch chapter of our Vampire the Masquerade game. We're on Wednesday for our Legend of the Five Rings game. And if not, I will see you next Friday for our Star Wars game. Please have a good night and take care of each other. And I'll see you when I see you.